welcome to Astro Energy with astrologer angel Shelley Overton. Energy Astrology Show for January 3rd, 2017. Can you even believe it? Here we are. And it is a lovely day in Orlando-ish, kind of. <laughs> it's, it's fairly um, overcast, although it is um, temperate. It's 77 degrees, but it isn't really um, a beautiful day as far as uh, visually. It's kind of kind of an ugly day. But you know what? I went to Dunkin' Donuts. I can't even speak Dunkin Donuts an hour ago with my daughter and um, going down the road there were leaves and it actually reminded me of fall which was really awesome because we don't get a consistent season in Orlando it's mostly just summer and a little bit of spring and a very little bit of fall and winter is like fall so um, when we get that it's really nice and you know it kind of makes you want to get the hot chocolate or the coffee out and tea I like tea a lot anyway I hope you had a wonderful New Year's we're already past Christmas I can't believe how fast it went past Christmas past New Year's and uh, still have my tree up I'm trying to take it down it's going to come down today so many things I've been uh, working on though so we're getting to that anyway um so I'm just looking here on my uh, computer trying to get a chart so that I can tell you what's going on in the sky. I was uh, hustling to get some more information and kind of ran late with it today. So anyway, I guess it's time to take a breath and see what we have. So in actually, I just pulled up. Okay, hang on. Remind later. Leave me alone, computer. Um I pulled up the chart for uh, Orlando, and I'm going to do the one that shows what's going on at zero degrees on the horizon, Aries, so that we can all follow along. So today, um, Uranus is in Aries. It's direct, 20 degrees, slowly, slowly moving, and he is opposite Jupiter at 21 Libra. And so uh, Jupiter and Libra want – Libra wants to balance. Jupiter wants to have its say. So opposite Uranus, now that Uranus is direct as of the 28th of December, Uranus is now moving forward and ready for battle and ready to be contentious. And, of course, opposite Jupiter, Jupiter – is very freewheeling, doesn't pay too much close attention to the details. Although I have to tell you, Libra stuck right between Virgo and Scorpio can pay attention to details, but can get caught up in the worry or in the concepts and the details carry uh, Libra away because Libra is an air energy. And that means they're in their head. So um, they tend to get carried away with the idea of everything and can't make a decision because they see every angle. So Jupiter can get caught up in that chasing down many different ideas. And, of course, he's the fiery action-oriented planet. So he's going to get an idea and want to chase it down. And I can tell you this is kind of my week. It's interesting because I didn't really think about it, but it really is true. I have so many ideas and not enough time to execute all of them. And that's kind of the energy of Jupiter and Libra. So Aries and Uranus, Uranus and Aries, let's get that straight. Uranus and Aries. Um, Again, conceptual, Uranus is an air planet. He rules Aquarius, the air sign. So it's about thought concepts. But Aries can get it done. The only thing holding him back now is that his ruling planet, Mars, is in Pisces. So Mars at 11 degrees Pisces and the moon is at 16 Pisces. And Neptune is at a nine. So he's surrounded by Neptune and the moon and Venus just got to Pisces. So all this feminine desire nature is coming out around him. So he's going, Oh, come on guys. Come on. Let's go. Can we do it? Please let's go do something. And, and Pisces is going, Oh no, I'm so tired. I'm, I really just want to watch a movie or meditate or daydream or listen to some beautiful music while painting. I just want to chill. And Mars is like, Oh, you know, so 
he's not real happy in Pisces and he's also influencing Uranus. So how he's influencing Uranus in, in Aries right now is that he is bringing in the dreamier visionary side of things. He's connecting the story. He wants to bring in the past, which also Pluto and Capricorn wants to do because uh, Capricorn is the uh, structure of things and the elderly who is who are the I mean if you think about grandparents they are the wise elder ones traditionally who bring the information from the past to the present so um, today we have so much energy in the past uh, we have mercury in just went in to or just about excuse me he's retrograde about to go back into Sagittarius but today he said 38 minutes retrograde of Capricorn and then 13 degrees later, we have the sun in Capricorn, and we have Pluto at 17. So we've got Mercury, sun, Pluto in Capricorn, Venus, Neptune, south node, Mars, and moon in Pisces. It is about the elderly. It is about going past, finding out the story, the archives, anything archival. Uh, definitely with Mercury at the first degree of Capricorn about to go into Sagittarius, he is really bringing in that energy of the elderly and um, structures around the knowledge base and what we know, what we express. That's Mercury. Also cars. So, and he's moving into Sagittarius and that means that he's bringing about transportation or air travel. And of course, I don't know if you're as tired of the list of things as Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius rules as I am and you know I say it every week multiple times so anyway it's education music uh, comedy real estate uh, travel spirituality foreign affairs anything like that that's going to be on our mind I'm just looking up when Mercury gets into Sagittarius which I think it was the fourth um, fully on the fifth but let me look up the fourth here real quick is he he actually enters uh, right between oh I take it back I was doing uh, all of the research for my horoscopes and I noticed that a lot this month we're going to have changes of signs over cusps that means um, for example uh, well there's a conjunction Sun to Pluto starts in in our time zone in Eastern time zone Saturday uh, at 150 145 a.m. and at 1045 a.m. on Friday in Pacific time he's doing the same thing so a lot of these uh, changes coming up are in at midnight or over the um, time zone so it's going to be really interesting because it actually straddles two days across the country but Mercury is in Sagittarius at 9 17 a.m. on the 4th and 6 17 Pacific on the 4th of January so he's going to be in there for four days going retrograde and then he'll be back direct and enter Capricorn on a full moon on the 12th of January in Cancer so um, that's going to be significant because Mercury will once again enter Capricorn and it will be a full moon so there is a culmination of something around the home and also around work and career so and it does align with a lot of things I've been doing so that's that's really interesting anyway getting back to today so we have seven planets in the sky energies that are asking us to look to the past tell the story and archive whatever we've been dealing with and not only that but they're all in sextile so that means they're 60 degrees apart Venus is at zero degrees Pisces sextile to mercury at zero degrees capricorn and that means also that um the energy of communication is that we're going back over something that with our loved one or with a woman a sister or a love interest that we've already gone over and of course mercury is saying yes 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 i want to go back over it again because you know this is what i do it's details people capricorn We've got to go over the details. We have to make sure we have our ducks in a row, system, systems. And then Mercury goes in, like I said, on the 4th into Sagittarius, which is not a comfortable connection to the Pisces energy. But um, they aren't, they're still in sextile, fortunately, but it's a different energy and it does relate to spirituality and going back to our, our, um, ideas of what spirit is and how we connect to that. So, we'll go through that eight days of, you know, 
wrapping up some of this energy around Sagittarius. Saturn is at 21 Sagittarius, and Mercury will go. I think he doesn't get very far. I think he gets like about if he gets 24. I think it's around 28. If even 20. Yeah, 28 before he retro, or goes direct at a 28, 52 minutes. So he only gets two degrees in. So it really is literally wrapping up the old story around a foreign energy, around, um, and it, it doesn't have to be a life-changing thing, but it could be uh, something that's been going on day to day for you because Mercury is a very quick-moving energy. It tends to be much more about some issue with a person as opposed to a life change. It does create life change when it interacts with stronger planets, such as when he comes back, goes into Capricorn, and then joins up with Pluto. So um, as he's in Sagittarius and ekes towards Saturn, um, he's already been over Saturn recently in Sagittarius, so there might be some details that you have to uh, go over with people far away. This is also in my future. It's really amazing how the energy absolutely connects to what's going on in my life because I've got some business dealings that are far away from where I am at. So it'll be about finalizing the action plan of something you've been doing and then moving forward again and making it tangible, which is really good because if you haven't been able to um, finish off those stories or maybe you felt a little out of it, like you, you know, Mercury went into Capricorn and it got all the way up to, I think it was 13, which is where the sun is today. So the sun is shining on where we were at when Pluto went retrograde a couple of weeks ago. And he's saying, okay, it's coming back in. And this is also true in my life that um, this particular business dealing that I've been dealing with has been kind of on hiatus for a few weeks. And now I'm starting to get some acknowledgement again from some business partners. And then Mercury goes back into Sag. It's about connecting to them. It's about finding out, and this could be for you too, or wherever it falls, it's connecting to the Sagittarian energy school. Um, I know I, I'm just giving you examples because it fleshes it out for you. But in my daughter's world, she's in school online as well as uh, she takes a couple courses online. And then the rest of them are in a bricks and mortar school up the road. And so um, end of the the vacation we're having now, and so she's starting to, like, have to deal with the homework, have to deal with the school again. Mercury is education, going back into Sagittarius, in a co well, tomorrow, and then, of course, she starts school again tomorrow. So it's good, um, you know, dealing with a couple of those issues, and then right away Mercury goes direct, gets our thoughts back on track. But in Sagittarius, it is about the education, about the spirituality and expansion, and then goes right back into Capricorn on the 12th. It's going to be um, back down to uh, – I want to say a little stoic, much more pragmatic, practical energy, which is where it is today, that we're going to have to go through the A's, B's, C's, D's, all the way through the alphabet. We don't get to skip forward with Sagittarius or Saturn, ha, Capricorn. <laughs> there we go. You might see the information's coming so fast in my brain, I can't get it out of my mouth quickly enough. Anyway, um, so Capricorn and Pisces also in the chart today are highly dogmatic and very slow energy. It's not energy that's going to get us where we want to go quickly. The thing that wants to go fast in the chart is Jupiter and Uranus. Those are both fire energy, Jupiter and Uranus in Aries, which is fire. So they're like, okay, I've got this great vision. I'm ready to go. I'm so excited. They are the excitement of our, our Zodiac right now. And so wherever Libra and Aries fall in your chart, you're starting to go, oh, I'm so excited. Can't wait to do it. And same for me, you know, that's in my 12th house and in my house of work. And I have some work stuff that I'm really excited to get to. Um, and then Saturn and Sagittarius is saying, okay, I know you're excited, but have you tended to the details? But I don't want to deal with the details. Well, you know what? Um, the details are all mental right now because sextile between exact to the exact degree, Jupiter at 21 uh, degrees of Libra and Saturn at 21 of Sagittarius. It's about noticing and understanding the concepts and then getting your ducks in a row about how to make those manifest once everything is going forward, Mercury and, and Capricorn. Actually, that's the only one that's retrograde right now. Isn't that awesome? I love January for that reason uh, because most of the plants are direct right now. Of course, in the rotation um, that changes over time. But right now we're on a cycle where January has everything for the most part as of the 8th, when Mercury goes direct, everything will be going direct briefly probably because um, 
Right after that, we have a retrograde of Jupiter in February. But for January, get your ducks in a row and then start taking some action because, you know, now the work is going to start coming fast and furious. Okay, let's see. Um, let's get to some Pluto, and then we'll get to some callers. And if you want to have a reading today, the number is 347-994-3365. And be sure and hit the one button on the keypad so that I know you want a question answered. And I can get to you as soon as we're done with the mythology. Okay. And I don't know. I don't think I told you who I was today, so I'll tell you real quick. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. And uh, you can get me at astrologerangel.com. If you'd like, and also Astrologer Angel on Twitter, Facebook, and I think I have a Pinterest. I also have a Pinterest site that I post on uh, some of the glyphs and the information about the different signs also on Pinterest. So you can look me up there. Okay, Pluto mythology. So Pluto is a Greek name for this god, and he is the god or ruler of the underworld. And his Roman counterpart is Hades and actually Hades was also a name that he had earlier in chronology in time so in ancient Greek mythology though Pluto represented quote a more positive concept who presides over the afterlife unquote and uh, he was also known as Plutus which I think was probably the majority of the time for that at the time uh, in ancient mythology and ancient religions, he was Plutus because that's how they spoke. Um, he was a god of wealth, and also because minerals were found underground, that's where the wealth came from, from the minerals. And he was subterranean, uh, the energy of the subterranean realm. And so he also, in, of course, mythological agriculture, which seems to be a strong tie to most mythological gods and characters, um, the agriculture was important. And because he ruled the underground, that's where the seeds grew. So um, that's his connection to agriculture. He married Persephone, who is the queen of the underworld, and he was a stern but loving husband. Um, although to get Persephone, she was, oh, I want to say the daughter she was Zeus's daughter, and this is where mythology gets a little confusing because Zeus was a god who also begat Zeus as a son, or there, or you know, he was a brother and a husband and a father, and he was connected to all the same people. So it's the same character having multiple roles or having, um, I guess, incestuous connections, but that was common for the gods apparently, and. So anyway, Pluto had his eye on Persephone, and it said that uh, along with Persephone, he received souls in the afterlife, but he actually was influenced by Cupid and Venus. It is written that um, Venus and Cupid gave him love and desire towards her, and so he ended up abducting her and ad abducted her from her parents, which she was not very happy about and not on board with, but um, she was known as Kor or the Maiden. It was a synonym for the Maiden, and he abducted her from her parents, but the myth states that, he, oh, I, I'm sorry I said that he was manipulated by Venus and Cupid. Um, it, it is also written, this, some of these uh, were listed as his children, which were, um, per, let's see, Demeter and Zeus, but also 30 others. I counted them. They listed 30 others, including Helen of Troy. So um, I find that interesting because further along in the research, it also said that he was monogamous and that he had uh, no strong recollection of children other than uh, there were stories alluding to the fact that he fathered Electo, which was she was also known as the Fury. And she had sisters, which were Vengeance, known as Tisiphone, and Jealousy, which was Megara. And uh, Pluto didn't like Alecto, so because she was kind of mean. And then also, um, he oh, – hold on one second here. I have to back up on what I was saying because I jumped around a little bit. Um, 
Oh, and his brother. So he ruled as a triad along with Zeus and Poseidon, who were his brothers. And and then um, there was a story that Zeus disguised himself and fo- to Persephone and fathered Melino, M-E-L-I-N-O-E, as a daughter. Um, so there are many different attributes of children to Pluto, but it's rather confusing when you get into it because the mythology is stated from what we know of other texts and other writings and they can contradict or they can add. And it's kind of like, Oh, this one, this article or this book or this writing said this, which just becomes part of the mythology. It's just given as part of the mythology, whether or not there's anyone else who ever says anything. So um, it's really interesting to try and, as a left brain and a right brain person, I'm pretty equally balanced. My left brain is going, but where's the logic? And my right brain's going, eh, but it's myth. So, you know, we just have to write it off to myth because there's no actual, I mean, you know, again, when you talk about gods being born of ribs or coming out of heads of their parents, I mean, you got to just assume that it's the way it was written. So, Anyway, um, Pluto and Hades appeared in the Greek magical papyri, excuse me, P-A-P-Y-R-E, slow down, P-A-P-Y-R-I, which if you're familiar, papyrus was the paper they used to write on. And so Greek magical papyri is, I'm assuming, the paper or also known as curse tablets, and in Roman, the Roman was the cursed tablets and the Greek had the magical papyri. But the offerings on the cursed tablets were, they, they wrote about offering dates, figs, and a black pig. And for the curses to come true by a desired deadline, they sacrificed these uh, pigs or any dark, uh, they made offerings in dark in color. So that was given to Pluto. And attributes are keys, a throne, horses, and a Plutonian attribute or characteristic is the ambiguity of color. And Pluto also rules over Cyprus. So Cyprus meaning the tree. So there are a lot of, lot of, lot of different things you can find out about Pluto. And again, I do my best to give you a fairly good amount of information, but you can also do your own research because those characteristics are also assigned to the sign of Pluto, the god of the underworld, and also the phoenix, which is one of my personal favorite um, visuals of the energy of Scorpio. Its sign is uh, the dragon and um, breathing fire, and also also the mythology of a dragon, if you think about it, you know, flying around this mythical creature, flying around with wings and... Um, able to breathe fire, which is pretty cool, I think. And then the phoenix rising from the ashes, which is a very Plutonian energy in astrology coming up out of the ashes. You know, you burn it to the ground, kind of your dragon's breast, burning it to the ground, and then it rises out of the ashes. So um, I guess that's the image I want to leave you with because it can be very intense and passionate. And, and definitely I can see how he is connected to the fury, vengeance, and um, jealousy. So, and also jealousy, interestingly, because those are the um, daughters or, you know, of course, jealousy and vengeance were sisters of Electo, the fury, but they came from Pluto. And if you think about that in an, I want to say an allegory, I guess it's very similar energy to what people observe about Scorpio and Scorpio's ruled by Pluto. So anyway, there you have it. So um, I am going to take a little break and then I'm going to come back and we're going to take callers. So if you want to call in, the number is 347-994-3365 and I look forward to talking with you. In these days of stress, running around, responsibilities, we all need a little place to go to to make it all better. Is that place sports, football, Or maybe you like to garden, paint, or just listen to music. Wherever your happy place is, you can find a shirt or mug to reflect that happy place. At myhappyplace.rocks, 
We have a variety of lifestyle products, including iPhone cases, pajamas, and pet items, all with beautiful, colorful designs, which help us go to our happy place. Stop by on the web for great gift ideas for others and yourself. MyHappyPlace.rocks Lenny Pickett appears courtesy of Random Act Records. Check them out at randomactrecords.com. Hello and welcome back to the Astro Energy Astrology Show. My name is Shelley Overton and I am an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. So if you are interested in getting a reading, I would love to talk to you so um, we can go over your chart, find out what it is you would like to know, and I can tell you about all sorts of things. I can tell you about love, money, career, life purpose, children, romance, whatever you want to talk about. Okay, let's go to the calls, and we have 352. Hi, 352. How are you? Hi. 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 <laughs> My name is Linda, and I'm from uh, Jupiter, Florida. Oh, my goodness. Perfect place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down there by Miami. Okay. So yeah, you haven't called the show before? No. Mm-mm. Okay, wonderful. So um, give me your birth information, and we'll answer your questions. Okay. It's March 12th, 1955. Okay. And um, it's um, 1123 p.m., Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. And what can I do for you today? I am wondering about money and getting a job. We recently moved here, and mm-hmm. I just never thought it would be so hard to get a job. <laughs> so there's oh. got to be some, you know, a big fat rock sitting, mm-hmm. <laughs> sitting in the middle of my chart. So, Well, where? when did you move? How long ago? Um, uh, November the 1st. And okay. I had, um, you know, vacation time and things. So mm-hmm. I actually haven't really been out of work except until December 1st because I was okay. paid all the way through there. Okay, great. Sounds wonderful. Um, hang on a second and let me just real quick call up that date. I just want to see what was going on then. Okay, so you move with Moon at zero degrees Sagittarius, Saturn 14, Venus 17. So everything was in Sagittarius. And Moon, excuse me, Sun and Venus... I go so fast. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Sun and Mercury and Scorpio. Um, Mars is at 24 Capricorn. So that's interesting. So Mars in Capricorn just past Pluto means that it was moving free, freely and not connecting up with another sign. So you were kind of flying without a plan, so to speak. Is that mm-hmm. what you did? Right. Okay. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Which so, is so unlike me. Oh, well, no, you know, it's okay. It's going to be okay because Capricorn (laughs) is about structure and it's the bricks and mortar, Mm -hmm. looking for a job, looking for the, you know, something to go to. So that's fine. Um, Saturn's going direct now, which is helpful. Mercury is probably your big hold off right now. If you you had Mm -hmm. the holidays, so everything was like, oh, everything's on hold. Wait a minute. And everything in your chart is in Pisces right now in the house of home (laughs) and family. So it's all Mm -hmm. like, oh, chilling around the home, you know, not Mm -hmm. having a Mm -hmm. difficult time. I know you're probably having a difficult time to get out there, but your Mm -hmm. chart shows that it's going to be much better after Mercury goes direct and then gets back into Capricorn. And when he gets to 10 degrees specifically, he is in trying to your Mars in the house of work, which is really awesome because that's a trigger for a job. Yeah. So let's just see when Mercury gets to that degree. It's 10 degrees and 16 minutes. So it's going to be the 24th of January. Okay. Yeah. And after that, also, you're going to have the sun in Aquarius, which will be coming into your house of communications. And I'm just going to real quick look at your chart here. You have a Saturn in Scorpio and it's just over the cusp. So you have a Scorpio rising and it's at 20 degrees and a 21 degree Saturn in Scorpio. So that's your career. That's your life purpose. And your life purpose to a great degree is finding out who you are and what you're about and what your desires are and finding out about your own personal power. Part Mm. of that comes from um, the energy of Scorpio. So that rules 
uh, death and dying, rebirth, anything around like goods of the dead. It could be legacies. It could be insurance. It could be legal things. And particularly attracted to um, these are just things I would like professions. I don't, I'm mm-hmm. going to ask you what mm-hmm. you do, but don't tell me yet. So it, mm-hmm. it's um, things like, I mean, I know for some reason it came to mind morticians are definitely oh. Saturn and Scorpio, <laughs> but um, oh. you know, anything of the dead. So it could be mediumship. It could be um, dealing with tax law. It could be dealing with um, oh. inheritance law, anything around lawyers, politics, um, anything that oh, detectives are really big on research. Um, mm. Definitely good for therapists because they dig in and they help and they're really, um, they can intuit what goes on with people. So all of those things you're really connected to um, mm-hmm. and that, that can bring out like a drive in you. You go, Oh, you mm-hmm. know, the stuff, something in there fascinates you. And you have a moon at 13 Scorpio, which is really awesome. And I've said this before for the long time listeners, I have moon at 12 Scorpio. So I totally appreciate your moon in Scorpio. And, <laughs> and that means that, that you're really insightful and you're really good mm. at reading people. And so um, now tell me what you're attracted to and what you do. Oh, well, what I was doing was working at a university. Um, okay. And, you know, I, um, although I'm not a quote unquote an advisor with a degree, mm-hmm. that's what my job was, was advising students. Very cool. Um, and so, you know, and it's interesting because um, I, I'm just naturally a helper and a, you know, somebody who mm-hmm. can really read people. Is that yep. uh, Moon and uh, Scorpio? the degrees is that a, a psychic type of a mm-hmm. uh it is yeah but you have so much other stuff you have sun in pisces jupiter in cancer and uranus in cancer which are all any water signs are going to be really intuitive and very connected to people and your sun in pisces mm-hmm. is in the house ruled naturally by cancer which is the home and family so there's a strong moon oh. connection to your sun as well um mm-hmm. if you went but mm-hmm. yeah, the moon and the moon is only seven degrees off of your horizon. So that means um, in the sky, it was just going up into the sky, but it was also mm-hmm. going into the part where it's hidden. So if you think of the sun coming up over the horizon, um, that's mm-hmm. where the moon was when you were born. It was just coming up over the horizon on the eastern side, but mm-hmm. it's in that part where we can't quite see it yet. It's not high enough in the sky. So it's hidden from you. So there's something in your nature. You're very nurturing. You're very deep and very connected. Like you really want to love and nurture people. And if Mm. you're hurt, naturally cancer energy, which is ruled by the moon and any place with the moon is, can run away if it's hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, it wants to hide. Mm -hmm. Having moon in the 12th house, you do hide when you're hurt. And in Scorpio, you're extremely passionate. So when you hurt, you you hurt deeply and you really do have to withdraw to, to revive and to get back to where you need to be. And with that being said, you also have two planets in cancer in the house of Scorpio. And so all the water signs can be very um, murky. They mm-hmm, go away mm-hmm. to deal with emotions because they're so connected into emotions. So the good thing for you is Saturn and Scorpio means that are able to bring boundaries. And even more so in the first house is really good because the boundaries are stronger when it's in the first house because you have the influence of Aries in the first house. That's the ruler of the first house. So mm. um, Aries and Scorpio, very powerful, very passionate, and Scorpio rules um, value to others. So that's part of your life plan, your purpose. So, yeah, as wow. far as getting a job, um, definitely by the end of the month, I think it should be okay because what you need to do is wait until after the 8th if you can to send out some resumes or apply because mm-hmm. if you've already done it, that's okay, but it's going to be going back. And definitely with Mercury into Sagittarius, that rules education. So it'll be like, oh, oh look at this one. So if you did it before it went retrograde, which was, gosh, how do I forget this? I swear. I talk and talk and talk about these dates. And then when it goes, I forget what date was it. It was around the 20th. Yeah, well, it was in December. So, yeah. Yeah. It was like the like 10 days before the end of September. So I think around the 20th. Hmm. But oh, yeah. Or Christmas or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, when Mercury 
was going through Sagittarius, that's education. And it was right there with Saturn. So I'm guessing if you had already put in a resume, once Mercury gets in there tomorrow, your name may come up in that realm. Like, oh, look at where did this resume come from? It got shuffled down during the retrograde, but mm. now it's going back and then it comes up. So if you had done that, that's the kind of thing that would happen. And I got chills when I'm telling you this, so that may oh, be wow. the case. But then yeah. when he goes, yeah, when he goes direct again, it's like, okay, let's get this done, wrap it up, wrap that particular thing. I'm getting chills. So maybe that's what's going to happen. Wow. Um, and so definitely money doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem. Um, you're, you're very practical, even though you have Sagittarius at 24 ruling your house of money, the rest of it's Capricorn and Capricorn, it minds its P's and Q's and <laughs> invests wisely. It, it doesn't like not having money or work. And so Capricorn uh-huh. in your second house is definitely like, let's get this thing on there. Let's go. And this month, particularly, like I said a minute ago, everything's flying clear. There's other than Mercury, when he goes oh, direct, good. everything will be clear until February when uh, I think it is Neptune goes retrograde, whatever it was I said, Mm -hmm. um, Jupiter goes retrograde. And so we're going to have like all this energy associated with the structure and shoring everything up, getting the system in place. We want the tangible real world things to go well. And so, yes, you're going to have a lot of this energy. And then also because Uranus and Aries is going to be going in fairly soon, I think, I think he's moving pretty fast. He's going to go in your house of work. So that's a good thing Mm -hmm. too. And it also will give you opportunities to work for yourself or if you are interested, Mm -hmm. you know, be a freelancer so that like a consultant Mm -hmm. kind of person, that could also be an opportunity for you by April actually, because that's when he goes in to your house of work. So, and definitely there's a connection to um, technology in your job when that happens. So in April, it's going to be technology. Even though Capricorn energy in your house, you've got in the second house of the tangible, you don't necessarily like it, but you've got Venus and Mercury and Aquarius, which are very much about technology for communication. So Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. will be a good thing for you because you're going to have like this really strong energy in that arena. It's going to be about technology and bringing that in. So maybe you could even look, and this is an idea, look into Mm. being an online teacher um, Mm. because where'd you move from? Did you move from Ohio? Um, Gainesville. Gainesville. Florida. Okay, so you probably mm-hmm. know about FLVS. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. you could potentially apply for that as well, and um, oh, cool. you know, do online something online. Yeah. Like I don't know what you might, you know, I don't know your background, I don't know your, you know, education, but that might be another venue because it's coming up pretty strong in April for you to do something online. So you know, wow. having that connection well, that's really to the nice. educational system. Yeah. Gosh, Shelly, so, thank you so much. I needed welcome. this so so badly. I was so bummed <laughs> out. So, <laughs> oh no, no, no! Please your don't. insight, your oh, insight no. has just been just uh, what the doctor ordered today. I can't thank awesome. you enough. And you're coming into Jupiter conjunct your Neptune, which means he's going to expand your dreams. And there's partnering oh. coming in as well. It's it's a big thing for a lot of people because Neptune in people of your generation in the end degrees of mm-hmm. Neptune in Libra, so it was the fifties. There's a really strong connection to partnering up with people for things. And for you, um, relying on someone behind the scenes is going to be really helpful. And it's also bringing in like an ideal situation. You're being asked to create this. And it's the course of this year. There's some kind of partnering coming in for you over the course of this year that is Mm. really setting you up for something you've always wanted to do in a way you've always wanted to live your life. And I don't have time to get into more of the details if it's a romantic one or not, but that's coming. So I'm just telling you that. That, that there's oh, a strong well, partnering to create your dreams. Wonderful. Oh, All right. Don't feel oh, bad. Thank it's you, a new thank year. You, thank you. No, it's a new that year. feels great now. Yeah, yeah it's, be, it's going very, on behind the much. scenes. Yeah, it's behind mm. the scenes and it's going to come. You just have to wait. Mercury is just holding it off there. And we got a lot of Pisces, Venus, Mars, all that's in Pisces, which loves to bog down and take it easy. And it's behind the scenes. Everything's behind the scenes for you. So don't worry. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, You've got to wait a little you. bit. By February for sure. Thank Boom. You, thank okay. You, thank you. You're I welcome. really appreciate it. Yeah, call me back and let Take me know care. how it's going. You're welcome. I will. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Okay, let's take eight one. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna jump the line. I don't want to jump the line. There we go. Eight one seven. I hit the wrong button, but I'm gonna get to you two six five one. So, give me a second. Oh. But anyone, anyway. <laughs> hi. How are you? 
Good. How are you? Hey, I did two things. Wondering with all this big energy going on, career and living. Of course, financials okay. all go together with that. Okay. Is this Nancy? I did. Or- Okay, yeah, I got the right one. There's somebody else with the same area code and first three numbers, so I'm like, wait a minute. Anyway, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't get that too much. Me, but I had a reading with you a couple months ago and you had said a possible move in March and that looks like it might be going that way, but really of course, financial <laughs> career Yes, yes. Uh-huh. You had said we <laughs> thought it was gonna happen in December, which is when I talked to you in November, I think. And, yeah. Um, I'm like, no. Now you said, you had said, <laughs> no. yeah, I remember. And I'm like, no, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's honestly, so of course you do. one of the most satisfying things is when I tell people and they resist me. And I'm like, okay, we'll take it your way. We'll see what happens, but go ahead. <laughs> and then they're so like, I'm just curious well, okay. <laughs> there's a lot that needs to happen for it all to roll into place. But mm-hmm. March definitely looks like the right timeline. If a husband can get a job, B, mm-hmm. my company lets me work remote. C, the financing, he has to get the job to get the finance. So it's just saying, what do you see out there as far as this mm-hmm. rolling forward? Okay. Well, so it's interesting it because happen. you're, you're so funny. You're like, okay, this is what has to happen behind the scenes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you've got your finger on the pulse of every minutia of how it could happen. You got to let go. That's, I that's know. the job of the universe. You've got four planets transiting Pisces right now. The message is let it go and let, well, if you know, you're Christian, let God or let universe or let source, let it go because that's things are happening yesterday. behind the scenes. Yeah. So um, anyway, for you, let's see, we've got, so we've got Venus and Mars in your second house. They will be transiting into your third house, which will, okay. The second house is the money and possession. So you said now, was the house up for sale or you're thinking to sell it? Is that what it is? We're looking to buy. We've been renting for looking to buy. Years. We're looking for the right place. And we, we found it. We finally uh-huh. said, I don't care how it works out. We have to have this property. It's our dream right. property. We'd be right, foolish right, right. to let it go. Okay. I remember this. So, um, yeah. So how, how, let me know how it's going right now so I can see kind of, you know, as a touchstone where we are headed. Well, if the house is ours. We just have to, my husband has to get a job to transfer in order to get okay. the VA loan. He's a VA. I mean, okay. my my position will hold the note, but the, because it's a VA loan, they want him to have the job. Mm-hmm. He's applied at a couple equivalent jobs. Um, of course, I'm questioning whether my company will allow me to work 100% remote because right now I go into the office once or twice a week. Even though I don't need to, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I, I think they will. Have you asked them? Um, did you ask them already? I brought it up, and I she mentioned it, my boss, because I, mm-hmm. I it's not my company. They're more than happy to let me do it, but my right. client. I have a huge client that I oversee that it's mm-hmm. kind of up to them. They hold the little cords, but mm. there's no reason I need to go into the office. I know that. My company knows it, but mm-hmm. it's kind of like counting on the the uh, corporate account to right. say, yeah, it's okay. I mean, I can come up and come into the office. It's not it's like mm-hmm. a four-hour drive, so it can be done, whether they're yeah, okay that's with tough. that. Four hours, yuck. <laughs> well, I, um, I would probably come spend the night with friends or something. I, I would, right. you know, I only go in the office like once a week, if that. Okay. Wow, you drive four hours away. That's Saturn and Sagittarius for you. Not now, I don't. Not now, I um, don't. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm an hour from the office, and I really okay. only go in once every if, other week. If so. you move to the new place that you like, you would be four hours away. Correct, and that's the company okay. that I oversee. My company already said they're happy to let me live work remote. The oh, nice. client that okay. I oversee said they have to get the approval from the client. Uh-huh. They may require me to come up every now and then for a meeting, which is totally fine. I'll do that. Yeah. I don't mind the drive. So it sounds like drive, a, a non-issue. Sounds like they're going to do it. Well, and the other thing is Mercury going into Sagittarius on the 4th is the remote part. It's talking about being remote again. Saturn in Sagittarius wants to work at a distance. So when Mercury goes back in on the 4th for those, like I said, between the 4th and the 12th, those eight days, four four retrograde and four direct uh, if you wait till the eighth it should wrap it up and you'll you'll be all good with it as far as your husband and work well let's see here jupiter is in libra which is the partnership and right now it's like kind of in the works for him i actually want to look at his chart do we have his chart is he mark yeah yeah mark yeah, okay yeah mark let, let me look and see what's going on with him He's got Pluto on the ascendant. He's got his. Yes, he does. 
Okay. <laughs> and Jupiter, say, that's right, you guys, your charts are so close together. Um, it actually puts it back a little bit because Jupiter will be going to Scorpio and it's going to hit his midheaven. It's a matter of timing. And there's something he's going to commit to when it comes up to the midheaven. So, but that's that's December of ne- next, well, no, we're in 2017, this year. Um, December, Jupiter will hit the midheaven and that will be really when everything jump starts right now his Jupiter is in the house of education so if he's learning about something or he's doing research on it or um, yeah is there anything that he could be doing as groundwork I mean potentially does he have a year to be able to do because I can tell you once Jupiter hits his midheaven he's off to the races because Jupiter is going to be coming over his Neptune at 23 over the next year starting when it gets into his 10th house so it's kind of about a year away if he can wait. Well, his but, goal is to put – well, the move would happen within the next couple of months because the seller needs to be – wants to be gone by April. So we're okay. like, all right, we can wait yeah. until March. March works fine for Makes me. Sense. Mark yeah. can do whatever anywhere. He can just keep something to get the job – to get the loan really is what it is. His right. ideal vision is for to have organic gardening on this property. Gorgeous. And to, Love it. Yes. yes. Go so that's it. his vision, and it's, he's been studying solar – you know, off the right. grid type of stuff and all that. Okay. So he he has already been well then, studying that. Okay. Well, I I think that Jupiter just got past his Mars and Libra in that in the house. And the other thing that Sagittarius rules, which is the house his Jupiter is in, and it. Um, I lost. You broke up there for a minute. I lost what you just said. The um, the virgin is going to start. Which has to you want me to hear that because you're breaking up. I can't hear what you say. The and also, Taurus is at 13 degrees on the cusp of his home and family. When Mars gets to that degree, which is the end of March, he's going to want to do the agriculture. Well, that's his goal. So he has to have a real job in order to get the loan. The and, January, and like I said, the end of next year, when Jupiter hits his midheaven, Saturn goes into Capricorn. And when Sat- and I got chills for this. When Saturn goes into Capricorn, not only does it rule the agricultural side of things and the tangibles, but it goes into his house of, um, and even before the end of the year, like November, Saturn goes into his 12th house. And when Saturn's in the 12th house, it, it's in the sign, in the, realm of Neptune which is dreams and so making the vision happen and when it goes when Saturn goes into Capricorn in his 12th house it hits his son and right now he's already feeling this so yeah when you say yeah he's he's uh wanting to do it Pluto just went into his first house he's got the the oomph the desire the drive the passion and everything in line for his sense of who he is to move forward when Mars hits his cusp of home and family then that's Taurus that's agriculture Taurus rules gardening and our ag- and then it's in the home and then also um, Mars will hit his moon in Taurus and his north node I mean everything in his charts lining up to pretty much jump in both feet with the gardening and the ag thing that's what well, I see that. yeah well, I mean as far as the, yeah we just need the baby steps so that we can get there that's the only thing yeah. I'm not worried so much about my job it's just and if we sell our land here, we won't need to worry about it because the guy will own our finance. It's just, I, we right. did. We were just there this last weekend and we said, I don't know how it's going to work out, but this property is It's got to be it. Have, yeah. We have to and go that, for it's it. even more so. Um, all the Pisces in your second house of real estate and farm and everything, you've got Venus, Mars, Neptune, and Moon there today. He's got Saturn in Pisces. And the thing that's being triggered for him, which honestly at this point in his life, is like, hey, pay attention, is Chiron is right next to his Saturn. So there's a dream that he hasn't manifested because it was honestly his biggest wounding. And so there's a side of him that, like, basically the career, his career has always kind of, it's like he's tried to make the career, but it was never it. This is it. Neptune's moving into, you know, it's, it, it's already in the house of money for him. It's going to just continue over the next eight years to get closer and closer to his Saturn, which is like, this is your dream. This is what you have to do. It's in his house of money. It's going to be there for the next decade. You know, awesome. 
do your dream. That's what your chart's telling you to do. And it's aligning. The planets are aligning to give him what he needs to have the power to do it now. You know, when Saturn goes into Capricorn at the end of this year, it's going to be in sextile to all of the Pisces energy in his house of money. And it'll be in the 12th house, which his house of money is ruled by Pisces. Saturn's going into the Pisces house. Everything is about making his dream come true and making it tangible. He has Saturn in Pisces. Saturn goes into the Pisces house. It's about the tangibility of the dream. So I think it's going to be okay. Let it go and put it out there. It'll all flow, however. But so the it, It's going to come together. The March, middle of March? Middle of March is? Um, the, the move we were thinking Yeah, would be. so... Yeah, Mars Mars goes in, uh, well, for you, I'm looking back at your chart. Mars gets to Aries fairly quickly in February, I think. Nope, even late, earlier, January 29th, Mars goes into Aries, which is the cusp. Uh, it's the very end of your house of money, and, and it's also sales, and it's into your house of expression, the third house, and it will be joining up with your son. So it really is about sales and, um, you know, when it goes out of the house of money and possessions, it is when the purchase happens. So, awesome. yeah, so that, well, good. that's yeah, a really strong energy the by land, the end of the we month. We don't need a bank. If we sell the land. We don't need a bank. We just need well, to Well, heck, what are you waiting for? Say, Get on with it. Well, After Mercury it goes direct. It's, it's just a matter of it's selling. So we, we put it yeah. out there saying, okay, time is now. Oh, that's now, right. I gave you the go. dates, didn't I? I gave you the dates yeah, to I, do it. Yes, because we did put it on the market the day. Yeah, that's better. It's six o'clock in the morning. I remember. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> and, and you did. Was... Okay. Yes, so so I yeah, I don't remember what um, what I had said, but everything's behind the scenes right now. Mercury's retrograde, so again, you know, um, when Mercury goes direct, that's the and it's going back into the house of Sagittarius or the sign of Sagittarius, which is okay. So. Your Sagittarius is in the house of the hidden, and when it, when Mercury goes back into Sagittarius, it triggers the real estate deals, and when it goes direct on the 8th, it has four more days of wrapping up the deal for real estate. So I'm guessing uh, by the 12th, that's, that's what I would anticipate is by the 12th, because not only is Mercury going direct in the, in the sign of real estate, it's at the end degrees, which wraps up the old story, and it's also in the house that resonates to the house of money and possessions, the Pisces house. So everything is saying, making it real, making it happen, but you just need to get Mercury up there in Sag and then go direct. Which so, is why I'm not mentioning it to my office yet. <laughs> if I want to yeah. wait until after Mercury retrograde. I've already yeah, talked to her. She yeah, you yes, it. but then I recanted when Mark didn't get the one job. He applied for a job and didn't get it. Oh, so I uh-huh. said, never mind, it's not happening. So, And that was in December. Right. And I just said, even though we knew we were going to move anyway, we just said, mm-hmm. right now, it's not going to happen. So no sense of freaking her out. Well, I can tell you, um, Definitely, if he's ready to jump in, his chart's supporting him. And when that kind of energy happens, sometimes the universe puts the roadblocks in what we think we have to have. And it doesn't Mm. end up happening the way we deem it should because we know our heart is somewhere else. Like, I remember way back in the late 80s, I was working at this job, but I really wasn't happy. And I went away on uh, like a it was like a pilgrimage to Japan for my Buddhist practice. And when I came back, I was crying before I went into work. I like, I hate this job. I don't want to be here. And they let me go that day. And I was actually, I was shocked, but the universe put me where I needed to be. I was much happier and I went back to college. So, you know, when things happen a certain way, you don't know how they happen, but they're in alignment with your vibration. And I definitely believe in these charts, both yours and your husband's, you guys have such similar charts. You're only two degrees off on your rising signs. It, you know, everything is there right now in Pisces saying it's the dream. Do the dream. And you have sun in Capricorn right now transiting. Mercury will be going over your Saturn. Sun will be going over your Saturn. And your Saturn and Jupiter are combined in your first house. So you've also got this strong push for fortune and for tangibles and giving way to the idea of what you want your fortune to look like. So let me see. Where's your Neptune? Your Neptune's at your mid-heaven. Jupiter will be there also for you by the end of the year. It's all going to work out. You know, if you could just hold on to the vision, 
it's coming your way. It is. You know? We were just there this last weekend, and it was like, it's a no question. We be That's so cool. It's everything we've ever wanted in a property. It's just worrying about the logistics, and that's higher power. Man, we just have to release them. We, I said I released Yeah, you it. do. We, there's no question I, anymore yeah. whether or not it's going to work out. We know it's going to work out. We uh-huh. just don't know how. Awesome. Right. And the how isn't up to you. If you ever listen to the Law of Attraction with Abraham Hicks, it's oh, not him. up to you. <laughs> it's up to Let's put the you. GPS make the... on where you need to go and don't worry about how you get there. Follow the GPS, exactly. Right? Well, you know, you've you've asked. You take action. The rest is up to the way that is best for you because you don't know the path to the to the end. You only know you want to get there, but you don't know the best way there. Right. The road you go down, if if you go down, you get roadblocks. In my opinion, like well, how I live my life is when I try and I try and I try and I'm very stubborn and I'm tenacious. So if I try and I've started giving myself a limit, if I go in a direction two or three times and I keep getting the same result, then I know that that's a no. It's like okay, right. I've taken action. I know I have to take action, but if the action I'm taking meets with a roadblock multiple times, that's an answer. You're asking if you're praying, that's the answer to your prayer. Doesn't well, mean you know that you're a bad person. We were driving home, and Chris, like I said, we live in a cool little town. We like a lot of the people here and all this, but you know we're ready to get uh-huh. out. And so uh-huh. we've been through, you know, you know what we've been through here. And so yeah. we stopped at one of the re- to go to the bathroom halfway home because it's a four hour drive. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I thank you so much for the signs. I'm talking in my head to the angels, and I get out of the <laughs> car at the rest at the stop uh-huh. front, and there's a um, at the gas station, and there's a magazine that says signs. When to say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> oh, laughing. my gosh. Seriously? <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, there was a magazine regarding that. elderly care and stuff like that, but I knew the message mm-hmm. was so clear. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, mm-hmm. I know. Time to say goodbye. Let's go. We yep, I love it. Goodbye. Those I... kind of things, when you're driving down the road and you see a license plate that says, ask the angels on a bumper sticker or something, or, yeah, or you exactly. see um, a billboard that says, let it go, <laughs> it's like, I love that. I love when it's so clear and it's in your face. It's like, I've got it. Thank you. And we, and we turned the radio on and the song, the song playing was Jesse's girl on the town is Jesseville that we're going oh to. Oh my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> I heard Jesse's girl this morning. Literally oh my gosh. just went to Dunkin' Donuts with my daughter and we were coming back and Jesse's girl was on the radio and her stepsister is Jesse and she just had a little girl. So oh, <laughs> it was new pretty birth, wild. New beginning. Oh my gosh, you just gave me chills. I think that was a double message for me. So oh, that's awesome. Um, well, that this is year is going to be great. You've got a lot going on. There's going to be some bumps and and stoppages here and there because the planets will retrograde. We'll have to go back over things, and we've got what three more retrogrades in? Uh, I think yeah. it's a double fire Earth this year. It's Ooh, okay. uh, this one's Earth uh, cap to Sag, and then I think there's also it may be a Cancer to a Gemini or something. I have to look. I'll look it up, and then we'll talk about it during you know probably the next show or something. Anyway, Nancy, always a joy to talk to you. You're so great. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year to you. Great. It's yeah. awesome. awesome. All right, thanks for the call. Okay, you take bet. care. Talk to you soon. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye. And that's the show, everyone. Thank you for listening. And um, definitely check out the website. I'm going to be getting a vlog up and a horoscope soon. I'm working on them today. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com. Yo, everybody get up! Everybody get up! Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service so they can help you when you need it most. 
And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audiobooks. Like Little Bo Peep, she lost the sheep, and she don't know where to find them. Go! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings. Much more. Geico's been around for more than 75 years, back when they were using Morse code. Sorry, that's just my sense of humor. What's more, with Geico, you get 24-7 access to licensed agents on the app, online, or over the phone, so you can talk to them at night or in the morning. So forevermore, just know that no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. More power to you. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.